Good morning. Man, love this crowd. Love it. Give yourselves a hand for being here. Excellent. Okay, this is the Big Rock on the Map series here at now rebranded University of Arkansas Pulaski Tech. Yay! We are, um, this is a series of events held each semester uh, where we talk to artists of all stripes and under, under the umbrella of the Center for Fine Arts and Humanities in our wonderful new facility here. Um, we've talked to actresses, we've talked to writers, um, and today we've got a very interesting program by an artist who's got her work up in the gallery, and I'll talk about that in just a second. But this series is, uh, we have to say some thank yous for the series. One, to just the Center for Fine Arts and Humanities Division itself. Um, this series wouldn't uh, happen without their help. The, uh, also, you should see on the back of your program a list of donors for this. This, is, uh, this program started out as a Big Rock uh, reading series. It's grown into the Big Rock on the Map series. And it, um, it only comes to us, it's only part of Pulaski Tech's um, programming because of donations. Uh, there is a, a wonderful donation by the Philip R. Johnson Foundation. But uh, if you would like to uh, make a tax deductible contribution to this to keep Big Rock on the Map going, to keep bringing in interesting artists to campus, um, please, uh, there's a little, should be a donation form in your program. If you don't have one, just come see me. I'm Werner Trishman, I'm the head of this program. Please come see me. Um, I will take any amount of money you have except for pennies. Uh, you hang on to those. Uh, otherwise, I will be happy to take your tax deductible donation to this program. Um, all right. Today we have, this is, this is a different program for us here at Big Rock on the Map. We have, uh, this is our first time to have one in the morning and I'm already, again, very excited about the turnout for this program. Uh, today we're going to hear from the artist Jessica Mojan and she is, has her work right up in the gallery upstairs and I'm not going to read from her bio but I am just going to read a couple of things. One is that she is um, has shown her work nationally and internationally, including in, gr in group exhibitions, including uh, translating the intangible at the 203 Art Gallery in Shanghai, China. Very impressive. And the retrieval of the beautiful at the Painting Center in New York City. Uh, you can read the rest of her bio there. One of the reasons why I think it was really important to bring Jessica here is one is to connect work that's happening up in our gallery, up in the Wingate Gallery, with a live person, the person that's created the work and can talk about it. The other is, is that here in the fine arts and uh, fine arts and humanities, we hopefully are uh, putting students on a path that some of them might want to become working, living, working artists. And those artists, and so I think it's really good to hear from somebody who's actually creating artwork, displaying artwork, is in the process of, of doing that each and every day. And that, I think, is really important. So again, very excited to bring to the stage Jessica Mojan. Thank you. Hello, thank you for inviting me here and thanks for showing my work in your beautiful gallery. I really enjoyed the opportunity to have my work here and I've I actually read the guest book and thank you for the kind comments. It's been really neat. All right. So I actually teach in Russellville at Arkansas Tech University. Um, that's why I moved to Arkansas. And I'm really enjoying the state. I actually just moved here in August. So um, the winter is fantastic, I have to say. <laughs> <It's warm. laughs> right, OK. So let's go to the next slide, please. OK, so this is my 
short biography. I'm from North Dakota. I grew up in a very small town actually on a farm. And my town had about 500 people. So for me, this seems like a very big city. And I received a Bachelor of Fine Arts from the University of North Dakota in Grand Forks, North Dakota. It's very cold there. I think right now it's about zero degrees and they're having a snowstorm. <laughs> And I, then I went to Montana State University. I got my Master of Fine Arts in Painting in Bozeman, Montana. So yes, I did do a lot of skiing. Uh, that's something I can't do here, but, but it's okay. I just go hiking instead. Let's go to the next slide. So this is a photo of when I was working on a drawing project in Montana. The town below, you can kind of see a bit of a town down there. That is Bozeman, and that's, that's where I lived. It's the Gallatin Valley. And I was working on a drawing a day project. So I realized that a lot of you here today are students, and you're learning how to make art, and that is the first step. The next question is, what should I make? So when you're in school, you kind of, you have a nice opportunity. You can learn how to make the art, and sometimes your professors will uh, tell you what your art should be about, which makes it a lot easier, and I think it's an important first step. Um, when you're done with school, you have to decide what you're going to make. What is important to you? What drives you? What do you want to communicate? I found this quote by D.W. Winnicott, and he said, artists are people driven by the, between the tension, <laughs> driven by the tension between the desire to communicate and the desire to hide. And I think that quote is kind of relevant today because here I am communicating and not hiding. <laughs> and um, so what is important to me? So I grew up around a lot of nature. I grew up on a farm. There really wasn't a lot to do. I couldn't have friends over that often because my closest friend lived about 10 miles away. So her parents had to drive her to my house if she was going to visit or my parents had to drive. And I needed to find some ways to entertain myself and that's when I started doing art. And then I went to school and I learned how to make the art and I was actually doing a lot of paintings of horses. That's what I was interested in. I grew up on a farm and I had a lot of horses and it was really nice. I still love horses. Um, and then I went to Montana and I really got into the outdoors. I started hiking a lot and skiing and going up into the mountains and it was really moving experience for me and changed some of my attitudes and beliefs about wilderness and out the outdoors. Um, so that's what I wanted to focus on. I wanted to show people what's out there in the world and maybe change their perceptions about um, what's important and give people some perspective, which is what I got from going hiking and going in, into these mountain environments. Next slide, please. And this is my drawing a day project. It actually should say 2014, but I have a little typo. That's when I started uh, drawing mushrooms and trees. After I moved away from Montana, where I had been painting mountains and abstracted mountainscapes, I lived in Wisconsin and I was, I had some trouble thinking about what I would depict because I didn't have these huge impressive vistas as much. I was going into the forest and looking around and looking at rotting tree stumps, looking at the ground and plants, and I started seeing these really interesting mushrooms. So on the left there is rainbow bracket fungus, and on the right that's just a fall scene that I did. And I wanted to talk about my drawing a day project because I did do a uh, drawing for every day of the year in 2014, and I think that really helped my work move to the next level, and having that commitment really uh, gave me some motivation, although a lot of times I grumbled about it. Um, <laughs> so I encourage you to try doing a drawing a day project and you can share your drawings on Instagram and people kind of get into it. These are colored pencil and um, yeah, so this was the start of the series that you can see in the gallery. That's why I kind of wanted to go back to the past and then hop forward to 2017 and the current exhibition. Next slide. 
So when you walk into the gallery, first you see these globe type structures and they are called microcosms or little worlds. And I wanted them to be, uh, I wanted people to think of themselves as maybe being on these structures or like their little planets or fantasy worlds um, of moss. And I'm really interested in moss because it's known for being a prehistoric relic of another time, so it hasn't really changed that much over the thousands and thousands of years. All right, next slide, please. Next. All right, this is my art studio in Russellville, and it's showing, it's a little bit messy, so. That's just my process. Um, and I created these by taking balloons and wrapping string around them. The string was dipped in glue, Elmer's glue, uh, cornstarch, and water. So it was a very messy process. You had to uh, put Vaseline all over the balloons so that the string wouldn't stick to them. So if you ever want to make something like this, you know, for a birthday party or for art, now you know how. Um, and I put those little moss balls inside and it, that's, that's pretty much the process. I think the hard part about this was thinking about what to make and how it fit into my show. Making the actual objects wasn't that hard, but the, what came behind it and why, why I made these is important. All right, next. So that's a close-up. You can see the string and where it connects. Next. So these are, one. this is one of the walls from the exhibition that's going on right now. And this is from my Lichen Neuron series. So I wanted to take imagery of human neurons and juxtapose or put them next to lichen imagery. I had been doing a lot of mushroom paintings, not doing a lot of mushrooms, just saying, um, mushroom paintings and looking at mushrooms and how beautiful they were and I was trying to think of what would look like the neurons and what I could, could put next to it. And, um, so this is what I came up with. I started to experiment more with bright colors. I wanted it to kind of draw people in. I wanted them to look like there's light coming from them. If you look at the blue and yellow one towards the right, I wanted it to look like it was glowing. Next slide. This is the opposite wall that you'll be able to see in the gallery. And on the right is one of my round paintings that I'll talk about later. And then uh, another painting that you can see, you can see the neuron form a little more, but I also wanted them to look like tree roots. So I'm thinking about how different objects at different scales have similarities in shape and connecting humans with nature, even thinking about the structures of our brain, how they can connect to things like rivers, branches, um, lichen. All right, next slide. This is my tree trunk series. I know it's a very creative name, and, or stump series, I guess I called it. And these, I wanted them to be really brightly colored. What I did was I, whenever I went hiking and I saw a tree stump, I would take a photo of it. And then I would take the photos to my studio and make these gestural paintings. So I wanted them to be life size or at least human scale. And the way that they were displayed on the wall is a little non-traditional. A lot of you see galleries where the paintings are all lined up in a row in the same height. And these are displayed a little more naturally, so I wanted it to look like a landscape that you could walk through. Next. These are the fractal sculptures. And I took my paintings and had them printed onto cotton cloth. I used um, a program online and then I put them over a wire frame and made them into sculptures. So I wanted them to show the repetition relating to fractals, fractal geometry. Um, yeah, next slide. Here's a close up of some of the stumps. I think that, that says it all. And then I have some of my round paintings around it and those are can be seen in my photo series. Next. 
those are the paintings that the previous um, fabric sculptures are made from. So I started with these. They have photo transfers of some mushrooms and some lichen forms. They're really brightly colored and I uh, transferred them to the sculptures. Next. So these are some close-ups of those. Um, the titles are Baroque Abundance and Baroque Abundance II. I wanted them to have really rich colors and draw people in and make the mushrooms look like flowers. I wanted them to, um, I wanted people to think, oh, how beautiful. And then if you think more about what they are, they're actually breaking down the wood into soil and then it can become new life. So I think it is really beautiful, but maybe when you're out hiking, you might not always notice mushrooms that way. Next, please. On the left is dendritic tree, and on the right is cyanolichen. So that one is named after a type of lichen that is, has blue-green algae in it. So I have a lot of bright colors. I like to work with the pigments and see how they can interact and spread throughout the painting. Next. These are some types of neurons. So my artwork does have a scientific basic basis to it. I think if a neurologist were to look at my paintings, they might recognize some, but they would probably point out some inaccuracies. I didn't have them vetted by an actual scientist. So it was more, I was just looking at these illustrations done by scientists and taking my interpretation on that. So, there, the pyramidal cell, I have a lot of those forms in my paintings. Um, the one on the top right, and you can see all these different forms. So all of these neurons are in the human body. Next. This is called synapse. So this painting is about the connections between neurons. So neurons communicate by sending messages to each other. And I think that relates a lot to how artists, artists communicate through their art and people write. And inside our brain, there's all this communication happening and I wanted to show it. One of the reasons I started painting neurons, and I haven't really talked about this a lot, but my grandmother had a form of a memory disease that was like Alzheimer's and just thinking about what can go wrong in the brain and um, how complex it is and I guess it's not really providing a solution for Alzheimer's or anything like that but it's just it's a mystery still a lot of it's still a mystery all right next okay so moving away from the neuron series into the photo series. So this is called the Camouflage Installation Series. And I created this with a series of round paintings that I made, and I wanted to put them in the landscape. So this is spring camouflage, and I rolled up my paintings and stuck them into the dirt, and I wanted to make it look like they were sprouting. Next. For this one, I attached the paintings to some fishing line, and I let them sink into the lake, and then I took photos. And I almost lost one in the lake, but I got it. <laughs> this was in, this, in April in Wisconsin, so the lake was really cold, but I didn't have to jump in. I almost did. Okay, next. This is summer camouflage. So this was actually the first series that I did. I was at an artist residency. Uh, well, actually, it was just a one-week residency in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. And we, I was living in a tent at the time. It was a sustainability residency. So we were trying to make a minimal impact on the land with our art. So we would make sure to clean up after ourselves and we didn't build too many things. And I made these round paintings outside kind of on a whim. They were sort of like my mushroom paintings. And I was looking at them and I was thinking, okay, well, what can I do with these? And I wanted to put them in the landscape so they would interact with what was already going on out there. I wanted people to be able to maybe be walking down the path and then they're surprised by these really bright organisms, like maybe they're actual mushrooms and you just discovered them. Next. This is, this is actually a couple more from the summer camouflage um, series. And I attached these ones to birch trees and then the left to a stump. I used fishing line and it, it kind of does look like they're growing off of it. 
So this was the start of the series and I wanted to keep it going and get each season. You can probably see the pattern already. Next. So these ones are actually my fall camouflage. These were done in Wisconsin. On the left are some paintings in the water at Devil's Kettle. And it's just a little waterfall. And the water is actually kind of rusty, so it's red. I'm guessing that's why it's called that. And on the right, some nice fall leaves and shadows. And it's interesting, on the left, the paintings, I put them all in the water, and they just floated in a line like that the way the water was flowing. And they didn't sink. Um, at the time, they, they probably weren't quite as beat up as the time I put them in the lake. So <laughs> they got through it pretty well. And I think the reason it worked is because I was, I'm using a type of paper that is a tree-free paper. And it's made of calcium carbonate and resin. It's called Terraskin paper. And it's pretty waterproof. If I had been using regular paper, you could imagine that this would be a big mess. And I would regret putting them in the water. I, I probably wouldn't have done it in the first place. But if I did, it wouldn't be good. And I, since I used acrylic paint, um, the paint didn't come off either. If it was watercolor paint, it would have gotten into the water. And that wouldn't be good. OK, next. So you can see the waterfall on the left and then a farther away view of the paintings. Next. This is winter camouflage. So this gives you a bit of an idea of how it looks right now where I'm from. Um, this was in my backyard in Wisconsin in February last year. Next. I wanted to show you Shanghai, China, since I was there just over a year ago. And it was a really great experience to share my art with the people of that city. And this is the modern side of the Bund, which is basically a waterfront district. And on one side, there's historic buildings. And then across the way, there are all these lit up skyscrapers. Next. This was the entrance to the gallery where uh, myself and some of my friends had an art exhibition. The show was called Translating the Intangible. Next. These are some of the paintings that were in the show. So the ones on the right, two of the pieces are actually in this show. So it's neat to think of that they traveled to Shanghai, they came back, and now they're here. Next. These are the two large pieces that are in the exhibition. Next. And this is a photo from the reception. Next. All right, so this is one of my most current paintings. It's called Can't See the Forest for the Trees. And the reason I named it that is because um, sometimes we might not see the bigger picture, and it's I just I thought it was kind of funny. So maybe we're looking at the individual trees rather than thinking about um, what's happening in the actual world or the bigger picture. And, I, and we'll see if we can get this to work. But I do have a time lapse video of creating this one. All right, so that's how it started. I used wide brushes called hockey brushes. And you could see some really big brushes there. Though one of those is a horsehair brush that I got in Shanghai. I'm assuming there's some horses running around with short tails. <laughs> and <laughs> that piece there is, it's a separate piece of rice paper, and I attached it with wheat paste to the painting, so it has a lot of different layers. So I'm thinking I'm going to do more of these type of paintings in the future. It was a fun process. OK. Yeah, that's good. We can go back to the, to the PowerPoint. Yeah, all right, next, please. This is another one on rice paper. It's called Tracks. And I wanted it to look like an aerial landscape or maybe um, trails of people walking through the forest. It's pretty abstract. I was figuring out things with the rice paper and using my new brushes. The, I haven't really talked that much about the mediums that I use. So I do use fluid acrylic paints. It's actually golden high flow acrylic. And it's an ink-like consistency. So that's why a lot of these look like watercolors. But they, they're not actually watercolor. This one has some metallic paint as well. All right, next. 
So this is my newest painting. It's called uh, Painting, Hoping, Praying, Women's March on Washington. And I did attend the march, and I was really moved by the experience, and I had a really positive experience there. And I, I wanted to create a painting responding to it uh, that would hopefully inspire people and give them hope for the future. So the bottom part is very abstract and you can't really see the individual people. I wanted to, to look like a sea of people. And then I did write some of the messages from the signs on it. All right, next. All right, so I do have um, questions up there. Um, if you could just hold on with your questions and talk to me in the gallery, I will be available. Um, upstairs in the gallery. Thank you so much for taking the time to hear my talk today, and I will see you soon.